Hello out there, my friends. It is I, Hondo Onaka. Now you know what to do. You must tune in to my favorite podcast, The Five-ish Fangirls. Otherwise, there could be consequences. The Tadges is going to continue all the way to episode 399 of the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. Tell him none of this is his fault. It was already burning. He's just the first spark of the fire. Tell him he knows everything he needs to know and feels everything he needs to feel. And when the day comes and those two pull together, he will be an unstoppable force for good. Tell him I love him more than anything he could ever do wrong. Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. So glad to join us. Let's start off like a door from the virtual table and see who joined us this week. This is Brittany Belvedere. Chrissy in Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, everybody. You had to pick the speech that made me cry while watching it. Really, Rachel? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I do what I can. Uh, <laughs> Anywho, before we get to all the feels, um, let's do the news, starting with award season. So the People's Choice Awards just recently occurred, which... Of course, it's the people's choice, so it's people like us that get to vote, and therefore it's stuff we like that wins. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh my. So, we have things like uh, the best movie of 2022, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Yay. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Um,. Let's see, male movie star Chris Hemsworth for Solar Love and Thunder, female movie star Elizabeth Olsen, Doctor Strange, The Multiverse of Madness, um, action movie star Elizabeth Olsen, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, TV show Stranger Things. Uh, so, you know, there's still some stuff in there where it's like, yeah, I know what that is. I don't care. Like, do I care that the Kardashians won Best Reality TV Show 2022? No, not really. But at least I know what it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. to, be fair, to be fair, I would want to tell what, whoever won the reality show. Yeah, I really. Like yeah, there's some weird stuff going on. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, it's good uh Still quite a lot of recognizable stuff mm -hmm. in there. So, you know, Noah Schapp won TV, male TV star for Stranger Things. Oh, I wonder what the demographics are for this, because it's kind of interesting. Because yeah. it's like Stranger Things and Marvel stuff, it's understandable. But then you have like drama TV star Mariska Hargite for Law and Order Special Victims Unit, which has been on the air for five bazillion years. <laughs> right so yeah I. it's like it's just funny because like the people's choice comes up and it's like okay you would think there would have been like a voting or you know, some kind of voting like who gets to vote if it's people's choice like I, I never see anything like hey you can vote on who wins these so here go vote and it's like, okay so like, you yeah, can because I, I voted I voted it in them before you just the kind of have to be in the right place on the internet to see it in the first place. It's oh, all about the algorithm. So, like, uh, yeah. I think I voted in People's Choice a few times. I didn't this year. I, I yeah. kind of didn't realize it was coming up. Well, yeah. they did Muse, mostly it's just I, I, lose, year. I lose track of when they are. So. Yeah. Well, but surprisingly, normally I get bombarded with like, hey, don't forget to vote in people's choice 
I saw next to nothing. So you're just not in the right spot for yeah. the algorithm to get you this time, apparently. Yeah. They, they, they definitely have the ones they wanted. Mm-hmm. And when I'm looking at these, I'm like, wow, I, I, I mean, I don't listen, I mean, I don't listen to the radio, so I have no idea. I mean, the only ones I recognize is Elton John and Britney Spears on the, mm-hmm. on the music, the you know, collaboration song. I guess Taylor Swift, but who doesn't know who Taylor Swift is, at least. Yeah. So there's not really yeah, a the, surprise there? No. Ow. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Poor Chrissy. Sorry, I bruised my rib from coughing so much. Yes. Chrissy's trying to cut herself in half. I guess so. I don't know. That, I mean, ugh. anyway. Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm yeah. just scrolling through here seeing what else I know. Okay, I've heard of Harry Styles, but that's just because. I work at a library and all the little kiddos want mm. their biographies about their favorites. Team Bopper. Uh, pop stars. So, like, mm-hmm. okay. Bingeworthy show is... That's weird. Okay, whatever. I'm just... Yeah, that one was the, the Jeffrey Dahmer thing. I'm like, you know what? Great. I, I'm glad people enjoyed that. Not my shtick, but Whatever. Let's see. Yeah, it's yeah. The the winners are kind of it's all over the place. Yeah, that's why I said I wonder about the demographics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I finally got the thing. But I mean, people is is people. So I guess as long as you're old enough to be able to yeah that's figure true. out how to you know, vote, work, then yeah. I mean, clearly, I didn't know how to vote. Otherwise, I'd have been like. Yeah, I would not have picked that one. Yeah. So, but any hoozles. And then the other any end. Hoozles. There it is. <laughs> yeah. On the other end, we have the nominations for the upcoming Golden Globes, which um is interesting. So especially, yeah, the the Golden Globes um. Obviously, as far as their categories go, they are it's movie and television, and then they separate comedy and musicals together, and then drama in their own category. So, mm-hmm. it kind of maybe potentially could be an indicator of where we're going as far as Oscar season, but kind of maybe not. But we'll see. Um, it yeah, it all. I mean, bear in mind the people who pick the Golden Globes are not people who are, you know they're not the same people. But we'll see. We will. Exactly. See. But you know, like I guess I have kind of the other side of the spectrum where most of the stuff is. We are not the demographic. <laughs> No. For a um, lot of this. Uh, so. Um, I do find it interesting that in motion picture drama, you have Top Gun Maverick, Tar, The Fablemans, Elvis, and then Avatar The Way of the Water, which isn't even out yet. Yeah, like, wow. Oh, really? really? It's the it's the it's the it's the Jim Cameron privilege. It's the James Cameron thing. You're like, oh yeah, we gotta nominate James Cameron because it's an Avatar. He, you know, I don't. It's an Avatar movie. Although, again, and I, I know a lot of people are saying this because the new one's coming out, but the first Avatar really didn't make that big of an impact on culture. Mm-hmm. It looked pretty, mm-hmm. and nobody like, and, and it was is basically it's Pocahontas in space. Mm-hmm. And even people who were like, oh, you know, real, you know, who, who really kiss up to the Oscars and, and, and the movies and, you know, who's who in Hollywood, even they're saying like, yeah, it, the first one really didn't, you know, and, and I felt like this, this is, this is how, this is how far out of the loop I am. I was thinking that I'm like, didn't that one come out 20 years ago? 
Like, I seriously thought Avatar came out 20 years ago because it just seems so far removed mm-hmm. and not like I've ever. And it's like, no, it was only, it was only what, 2009? But even something that, like that. Is something like that. But I, I was like, wait, wait a minute. I, because in my head, I seriously thought it was a, an early 2000s movie just because it was, it's been so long and, and they keep saying, oh, we're making a sequel. I'm like, uh huh, yeah, sure. Okay. But now they are, and it's just like, okay, but. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I've heard some early reviews of it. Some people, I mean, everybody, I mean, everybody agrees that it is, it is a pretty movie, like the first one was. But other than that, it's this sort of, it sounds like it's sort of the same story. Although some of the family dynamic is, is pretty good is what I've heard. Like, so if you, you, you want to, you want a, a, a movie about a good, strong family. Um, family relationships and things like that, that that works for it, but other than that, it's kind of mid mm-hmm. as far as good movies go, but, you know, it's, uh, it's, you know, they gotta, everybody's gotta kiss up to James Cameron. Yeah. I say this after having message back and forth with Nick about scheduling when I'm gonna come talk about Titanic on Gold yeah. Standard. <laughs> oh, I have... I, I I will have words about that. <laughs> oh, we will all have words when we get to that one. <laughs> it's one of those that I'm like, and, you know, and he, he's one of those directors that I'm like, dang, you do a really good job on this, on this part of it, you know, just in general in his movies. But then there's this other part that's just like, why? Mm-hmm. Why did you do that? Like, mm-hmm. You ought to be better than this. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but that that then that applies to like pretty much all of his films, at least the ones I've seen. Yeah, you know, I haven't seen all. But... Yeah. So yeah, I have not. I haven't seen anything of anything movie wise that has been nominated for the most part. So. <laughs> as far as film i mean i'm looking forward to watching glass onion and eyes out mister i wish i could have gone to see mm-hmm. that for the week that it was in movie theaters but it, it just wasn't gonna happen mm-hmm. so i'm gonna be forced to watch it at home um yeah because i really love the I, first knives out movie yeah um, so. I, still need to hear. And I still need to watch everything everywhere all at once because i've heard, I have that's heard supposed nothing, to be really really good yeah i've heard nothing but good about that I mean, I've looked into it, like, is this something that I'm going to enjoy? And I might, but at the same time, there's some things I'm like, I might be a little too squeamish about that. But I don't know. No. I don't know. It's just one of yeah. those things. But honestly, I'm I'm kind of hoping Top Gun Maverick gets some, gets some good. I mean, I know it's a popcorn flick, but everybody is like, yeah, this movie pretty much said, people, people will go to the movies if it's the right movie, you know, so you, mm-hmm. you can't use that. Of oh it's the pandemic people are too scared to go to the to go out in public it's like no they'll go if it's a movie they really want to see so mm-hmm. so that excuse is no longer going to wash as far as you know films and, and things go so yeah you guys got to bring your A game yep mm-hmm. so um that being said, Angela Bassett did get nominated for Best Supporting Actress in a Motion Picture for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Yes. So, yes. Hallelujah. No, TV wise, it's a little better. You've got The Crown, House of the Dragon for television series drama, um, Only Murders in the Building for television series musical or, or comedy. Um, so, of course, some of your cast of House of the Dragon and The Crown. Of course, finally, speaking it shall occur, Selena Gomez finally nominated for Only Murders in the Building. Yes, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, her st- her co-star, Steve Martin and Martin Short, have been nominated since the very first season, but she's mm-hmm. been left out in the rain. So, finally... Um. So yeah, got the 
not a huge, but you know, at least we have things like only murders in the building and the crown to uh lean on. So it, it's it gives me great joy that RRR is, is in Best Picture for non-English language. Mm-hmm. Although I've heard All Quiet on the Western Front is is a pretty heavy hitter too, so that one, yeah, it might come down to those two. I I, I would I would imagine, but it was kind of fun yeah. seeing a, a, a you know a, a Indian a movie of Indian cinema get so much attention. It's not Bollywood strictly, but they're related. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a good little flick. A a a you know, a if if a bit violent and, and disturbing, but then hey, there's there's dance numbers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, India, I love your movies. You just <laughs> it's so wonderful. Yep. So there's that. Stay tuned to find out who wins when the award ceremony ceremony occurs next year. Which is crazy to think about. Which is a couple only weeks a few away. weeks away. Yeah, the new year is only a few weeks away, but uh, the the uh, award ceremony is not immediately as we celebrate the new year. Like, woo, happy new year! Time to pass out awards. Get a little bit of a breather. Oh, speaking of award winners, uh, we do have. New episode of Gold Standard in the feeds. Working our way through the 1990s with the night winner for 1992, Clint Eastwood and Morgan Freeman, Unforgiven. A better Western than Cimarron, but it's still a Western. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> so. Oh, hold on. Let me go back. Let me go back and squeeze uh, for a second about the, the Golden Globe nominations. Uh, can mm-hmm. you hand to Brenton Fraser for uh, getting nominated Best Performance in a Drama? Best Attention mm-hmm. to the Whale? I mean, nice. I'm just so happy he's doing he's doing movies again and just he, he's just in the he's in, he's, he's in the, the public eye and doing well and you know if there was an award for, like, you know, the comeback kid, give it to him. Come on. Yes. Mm-hmm. I adore him. He's I mean, and he's doing awesome in Doom I Patrol. I mean, it's it can be a little gory and the language can be a little coarse, but, I mean, the storytelling is awesome. And the role that he plays, there's drama, there's comedy. I can say anything, but it's great to see him back. <laughs> Yes. I'm like, you, you know, I will go see, you know, put him in a movie, like, you know, reading the phone book. I'll go watch it. Mm-hmm. I have had kids watch The Whale. Oh, yeah, but I don't get that. So I mean, cute. just this past weekend, they aired the Mummy movies mm-hmm. <laughs> on TV. I Mom and I sat down and watched them. It's just like, hey, when it's uh, on. <laughs> yeah, that, those are movies like you watch them. But yeah, oh, it's just, mm-hmm. I'm just so happy. That, that, mm-hmm. that he's back and people are like yay you're back and I'm like oh you were my you were my favorite you know when I was a kid and growing up and, mm-hmm. and he just was gone for a bit now he's back so anyway sorry I, I, I was flipping to like oh, he, he got a nomination yay mm-hmm. <laughs> that he did oh. All right, uh, moving on to feedback. We got some feedback from Shalane. Her subject line her email was enchanted. Don't skip any of these. <laughs> so, because she wrote a lot. <laughs> um, like, you want to come on here and do this? <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, she says, but first, I can, I let's talk about. That. Yeah, she said, first, let's talk about the trailer. I read that this Indiana Jones film will be Harrison Ford's finale, uh, final Indiana Jones movie. And I hear they might do a spinoff TV series. Series. Uh, I haven't heard anything about a TV spinoff series. That's oh, a... there's been 
There's always news to me. I mean, there's already there's already been a young Indiana Jones TV series, so. Oh, there's there's always rumors of something, something yeah. or other. That is true. That is very true. The rumor mill is always a churning. Um. So yeah. Uh, she says I'll wait and see this Indiana Jones on Tuesday for five dollars, <laughs> like I always do for movies. Probably a good idea. Also, what else? Uh, I said also what else it's uh, n talking about next year 2023 it'll be 15 years of the MCU and 5 years since battling Thanos which is crazy but yeah she is right it will be 15 years of the MCU so so if it's 5 years since battling Thanos does that mean the blip's over the what or no, it'll be, it'll be five years since the snap for us. Yeah, so okay. in universe, uh, obviously it, they're several years ahead. Uh, <laughs> but it'll be five years since we all went in to watch Infinity War and Thanos snapped, and half the people disappeared, and we went what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We all walked out of the movie theater going, what the hell? Yeah. Well, then all the cons had, like, the therapy. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, yeah. <clears throat> been an interesting five years. Uh, no. Uh, she says, also, another Disney trailer, You Girls Missed, done by Pixar, not just Disney, it's Elemental, You Girls Center, D23 episode. This one's just going to be Disney, not just Disney, Disney and Pixar. Well, we stand corrected. She's always got, she's always up on the specs of stuff. Um, he says, I love the holiday special of Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, and talking about Guardians Volume 3, I read this Gamora is the Gamora from the past when they were getting the Power Stone, which came with the, yes, yes, this is the, this is the Gamora from the past who has no history with the guardians or anything yeah the, the gamora that thanos threw off the cliff she's never coming back <laughs> <Be gone. laughs> sorry again we all walked out of the theater going what <laughs> mm -hmm. now let's get to enchanted i love this movie for the past 15 years it was a fun lovable musical movie and i was still getting now and make it around that time and same but the musical Wicked, yes, Wicked, came out in 2003. Hey, good. I was right about something. Yay! <laughs> so many Easter eggs of the princess uh, from Disney movies. Also, the part when Edward was on the bus on Times Square, they had Broadway posters of musicals that the cast were in. Uh, yeah. Other Easter eggs, non-Disney Easter eggs. There was a poster for Rent, which Adina Menzel's been in. Wicked, which also Adina Menzel and Stephen Schwartz wrote uh hairspray james marsden he was in the movie i mentioned that after we stopped recording uh so plus this is the second time adina menzel worked with stephen schwartz so it's wicked kind of a bummer adina menzel didn't sing in the first one and now 15 years later she finally sings in the second after her outstanding performance in frozen i knew she was gonna sing in this one plus the song she sings love power is a mix of of uh, songs sang by her character like Let It Glow and Soaring on a Broomstick. <laughs> Those might be intentional lines. Uh, <laughs> no, oh, I believe so. Yeah. She is never going to be able to get away from those. I mean, no. <laughs> she has a, a, a storied career on, on the stage and everything, but it, it, uh, it's going to be Elsa and Alphaba are kind of mm -hmm. her. her Mm -hmm. character so I and her name okay being butchered that. by john travolta that's the mm -hmm. rest uh, of her life yes, that one. Yep. Yep. uh just like in the song first time in forever reprised from frozen with a lyric that sounds like the same from defying gravity from wicked yes i'm alone but i'm alone and free i'm flying solo at least i'm flying free yeah. again she has a type of character that she plays really well so chanted uh, so if an enchanted Disney's making fun of Disney is a once upon a time Disney making fun of Disney. 
Sort of. They're kind of the same. It's, Evil Queen banishes yeah. fairy tale characters to the land without magic. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that Once Upon a Time is is parodying fairy tale, the, 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 the Disney fairy tales. I mean, the original, I imagine, it's, was like, hey, you know, what if fairy tales came to our world and we do a drama about it? I think the Disney stuff probably came later, uh, you know, as, mm-hmm. You know, after like ABC picked it up and ABC owned by Disney, and so they're like, "Hey, what if we, you know, have Belle in there and Jimmy Cricket, and what if we name the dwarf Grumpy? You know, things that are very um, specifically mm-hmm. Disney things." Mm-hmm. So, and then you know, and then then as time went on, it was like, "Oh, hey, we're gonna throw Frozen in there." So this is definitely a Disney show. Kind of thing, but it didn't. I don't think that was the initial um, plan. But anyway, and you know, people have been people have been, you know, blending, you know, doing fractured fairy tales for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, putting their own spin on things, so I don't know. something like that. There's always yeah. there's always there's always a market for that somewhere. Yeah. Disney's always finding ways to take their stuff they've made and turning it into something else so they can make money. <laughs> money, dear boy. Yeah. I make money. Yeah. Uh, she says it was also fun seeing the Disney legend voice actresses that play the Disney princesses like Jodie Benson, Paige O'Hare, and Judy Kuhn, who's the singing voice of Pocahontas, and both worked with Alan Menken. And Judy was Stephen and Pocahontas along with Alan Menken. It's just one big Venn diagram that overlaps all over the place. Also Pretty during much. the uh, also during the That's How You Know song, the old men with yellow flowers that tap dance are chimney sweepers from Mary Poppins. One at least one of them was a chimney sweep in Mary Poppins. So I don't know if they all were, but at least one of them was. That's what I read at least. So which I thought was really cool. Yeah, <laughs> so. the footwork. Yep. Uh, my favorite song in the first Enchanted is "That's How You Know." My favorite song in Disenchanted is "Batter and Love Power." Uh, it's a shame that the first one didn't have a villain song, which we talked about. It was going to. It just got cut. So, uh, if you see uh, Jayma Mays in Glee, fans of Glee say she's a real life Disney princess, and now she is in a Disney movie playing a villain. She's one of uh the minions in disenchanted what's your faces minions so it took me a while there to figure out like i recognize her and i recognize like her voice sounds familiar i was like where the hell do i know her from i was like ah she's from glee so she's got one of those faces yeah uh, I <laughs> I just have a tendency to do that where I'll see faces and I'll be like you look in in stuff I'm like where do I know you from and I'll rack my brain and rack my brain and rack my brain and I can't think of it so then I have to Google it so that's gonna come up again here again shortly uh <laughs> <laughs> so now we talk about a uh, double feature of Enchanted when are we gonna do a double feature of Frozen. <laughs> I've been wanting to give you girls feedback ever since the second Frozen came out. It'll happen eventually, do you, do don't you, worry. Do you really want me to do this? You really <laughs> want me to do this? <laughs> uh, be careful what you wish for. Wish for, boy. yes. Mm. <laughs> you, you ought to know better. You <laughs> should know better. I'm scolding you in front of all of my podcasts. Our podcast audience, Shalane, uh, you know better than to ask me for that. Um, did Shalane, fair know, warning. It's so if fun you... to poke the bear of big sister. <laughs> you come into my house. <laughs> Saying Christmas get together with the family might be a little awkward. <sighs> Oh, we had our family get together over Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. You're off the hook, eventually. Uh, <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be Lottie's birthday. will be our next family thing. <laughs> you have time to come up most, with your argument between likely. now and then. Most likely. Uh, 
Uh, she says, I think why they did a second one was so they could have Easter eggs of princesses and the frog tangled and frozen. I mean, obviously, it's an opportunity. I don't know if that's necessarily why they did it, but they're like, hey, if we got the opportunity, let's go for it. So, um, says, so also, I've been in New York City and saw the location where they filmed Enchanted, like in Central Park during the how you know, so yeah, I mean. Central Park is used a lot. So you can run around Central Park and be like, this is Enchanted. This is Doctor Who. This is Home Alone too. Lost in New York. You know. Just off that's the top the of point my head. Of filming in a, that's the point of filming in a place like New York is because you yeah. know, you get to film in all the, the, the places that people like know. I yeah. guess or are famous. Yep. Uh, <laughs> very very true comment Alan Tudyk is in a lot is in a ton of Disney movies yes he is <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Captain Obvious welcome to he the party he is in a lot yeah uh, so the only films I've seen Amy Adams in is, in, is Enchanted Disenchanted Night at the Museum 2 Underdog The Muppets I love her in The Muppets and a little bit of The Justice League I find it funny that she's like Disney Princess and then she's in DC, where it's all like gritty well, and stuff. Of, Je- or Zack Snyder Justice League. There's yes, I know, if but it's still do, gritty yeah. and everything. It's like I know. If they palette wise, it's the exact opposite of Enchanted. Yeah. <laughs> if if they ever did a proper Superman, and you know, if they wanted to cast her as Lois Lane again, and it wasn't you know the grim, dark, angsty, blech, whatever. That would actually, she would actually be pretty good. I, I think so. So like, but, but she has to be. Uh, if you've ever watched uh, Super, either Superman the animated series or Lois and Clark, the the one with um, Dean Cain from the early nineties, mm-hmm. you know, or you know, even the Christopher Reeve one, like that kind of Superman, not this, you know, emo, you know, sad sack Superman. It's like no, 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 no. That's not Superman. Mm-hmm. I mean, Henry Cavill is amazing. Get him in proper Superman, please, please, for the love of Krypton, do it. But <laughs> that Zack Snyder thing was not Superman. I am sorry. I know Zack Snyder has got his fanboys, and bless you for it. That ain't my Superman. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I will watch Henry Cavill be Superman. If, if, if uh-huh. that's where they go, I will do it. <laughs> because Which oh, seems to be the case, since he's not doing yes. any more of The Witcher, so... Well, that was another situation, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Uh-huh. Also, I never watched The Witcher just because it's not my thing. But don't, yeah, don't, man. don't act like I wasn't tempted. Mm-mm. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Henry Cavill's just one of, them, one of those guys. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. She says, "Last thing, the top movie that's been kicking butt this past year is Top Gun Maverick." Fun fact, both Top Gun and Avatar have a lot in common. Top Gun, Top Gun came out in the 80s and dominated the box office, and decades later, a sequel came out and dominated the box office. Blue, she calls it Blue Avatar, so we don't confuse it with, like, Avatar The Last Hour Brander, I'm assuming, uh, or anything else Avatar-related. So, uh, James Cameron did so, not invent the word Avatar. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Blue Avatar came out the end of the 2000s and dominated the box office and a decade later a sequel comes out and might be dominating the box office we'll find out Uh, also fans want yeah also fans want Top Gun Maverick to be nominated for best picture sorry I forgot you girls aren't Tom Cruise fans hey I went and saw Top Gun and I enjoyed it quite a bit I can yeah. see why it's making hand, money hand over fist. Take them, I can take them or leave it. I, I mean, I like the. I dropped off really early on, but I like the like the first couple of Mission Impossible movies. They were pretty good. So, so I mean, if anyone out and watch yeah. every Tom Cruise, movie, if anyone but, I mean, is not a Tom Cruise fan, it's good. not any of us. It's Zan. Zan hates uh-huh. Tom Cruise. So. Uh, <laughs> it sounds that sounds like a personal thing. Yeah, <laughs> so. But, but no, I I like Speed. That was a good one. Speed two what? kind of dumb. The movie Speed. That wasn't Tom Cruise. That was Keanu Reeves. That was Keanu so, Reeves. Okay, never mind. 
<laughs> I get all my, my I get all my my nineties guys with you know dark hair. Dark hair. And they were all on the the you know, People magazine. Yeah, those kind of guys. I get them all mixed up. Sorry, yeah. my bad. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not that we're not Tom Cruise fans. So sometimes we confuse them for other people. Uh. <laughs> yeah, but no, Top Gun Maverick is, and so is Top Gun. It, it, it's a fuck. Soundtrack. This the soundtrack slaps. Mm-hmm. Both of them. So that's the end of Shalane's feedback, and then we have some feedback from Aaron. And his subject line was, "Now she thinks you and I kissed." Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Says, "Good evening, my five-ish hosts." I'm jealous of Rachel's Galaxy Con adventures. I'm kind of jealous of myself that it's already been so many weeks. Um, <laughs> I live in Columbus and was trying to attend, but I couldn't get time off work. Oh, that's too bad. Originally, my main draw was to finally meet Kevin Conroy, a personal hero of mine. I'm still emotional over his death. I understand. I went to get something out of my desk. Uh, I was looking for something and was going through the drawers and I pulled it out and underneath was a like slightly larger than baseball card size image of Jason David Frank in the Green Ranger costume that I had gotten when I met him at PopCon. <laughs> so, mm. uh, I was like, oh, yeah. I was not ready for that. <laughs> well, then Andre goes and posts, you know, his, his helmet reviews of the, the Power Ranger, was it the Lightning series helmets? And one of them is Lord Draken. And I'm like, Andre, dang it. Mm. Black nerd comedy for those who are. Yeah. Like, who mm-hmm. the heck is Andre? Yeah. YouTube. Go look him up. Yep. Yeah. Andre's awesome. Yes, he is. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's see. Aaron continues. I love Enchanted. It's easily my top five in my top five Disney movies. I didn't expect to love it so much, but wow. Amy Adams looks yeah. like a real life Disney princess. So it was perfect casting. She was magnificent. I wish she had gotten an Oscar nomination as she's my personal choice for winner that year. What's funny is I was just watching someone's. Uh, I was watching a uh, YouTube video. It's um, Cinema Therapy, where uh, it's two guys. One of them is an actual filmmaker, and the other is a licensed therapist. And they will, like, you know, analyze movies. And they did Enchanted. I'm a little behind because they released the their video before Disenchanted came out. But they were talking about how James Marston's performance needed to win an Oscar. Because <laughs> uh, it was yeah, so perfect, did, both both in live action and in animated form. Uh, oh my god, did, did we gush over him enough? Because I, I, we got off, and I feel like, gosh, I feel like we didn't say enough about him because just the way that he's taking it seriously and just going for going for the full on chewing the scenery. It's like it is a beautiful mm-hmm. thing to behold. Yes. That, that that's one of the biggest parts that just makes the movie work is, is yeah um well, we're gonna have to talk hairspray at some point so he's gonna come up again uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah Especially after I go see hairspray on stage uh let's see disenchanted was fine. Uh, I didn't just like it, but it disappointed me. I consider Enchanted a wonderful anti fairy tale, kind of like Shrek, where it shows you don't need fairy tale shenanigans to have a happy ending. Whereas Disenchanted showed the evils of magic, something that's been done many, many times before and done better. Again, didn't hate it, but didn't love it either. Anyways, yeah. thanks for the great work on the podcast. Yeah, I can see that point. Yeah, I, I mean, but like, like I said, um, if this movie had been in theaters, it would have been just horrible. Like, why would you put this in the movie theaters? But we're on a, on you know straight to streaming, it's fine. Not anything to write hold home about, but it's fun. Yeah, 
Yeah, well. Yeah, the whole evil magic is, is kind of overused, but the fact that it's like we discussed, it's it wasn't done with evil intentions is mm -hmm. the thing. So, and there's not really a villain in this movie except for a spell gone wrong. So, yeah. that's what keeps it from being too just cookie cuttery. But yeah, compared to Enchanted, yeah, it's 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 fine. It's cute. There are some mm -hmm. good songs in there. So I I did add Batter uh, to my my mm -hmm. my playlist. So. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, anytime you get, just goes to show just how a bit, how good of a of a songwriter Alan Menken is, even after all these years, the man <laughs> figures out how to use the word bladder. Yep. As a rhyme, in a Disney song. Uh -huh. Hey, you know, yeah. you've been writing, you've been writing these lyrics for, you know, how many years now? Yeah. You you you've you've got some tricks up your sleeve. Yeah. So. Oh my. Oh, anyway, thank you, Aaron. The day, for... the day he retires will probably be the time that he admits, yeah, I can't write. I can't rhyme. I can't anything rhyme with anything enough. else. Yep. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. I've I've peaked at bladder and batter. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh. All right. Moving on to uh, this week's main topic where Holly is definitely going to be in her wheelhouse. Uh, yes. <laughs> Star Wars. Talking about Star Wars. Yes. That crazy Star Wars. Cass Ian and or yes no. I will admit it took me a while same here I did not watch this as soon as it started streaming even though they gave us what the first three episodes uh, uh -huh. on day one um, which looking back now I understand why because it's you get slower. to because it, it takes the episode about four or five for it to really get anywhere uh -huh. so Maybe we should take this sign from here on out where if Disney's like, hey, do show on Disney Plus and they give us more than one episode at the start. We should just take that as a sign that it's like, you just just watch these. Trust us. And you're going to be good to go for the rest of it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so. Skip the last five minutes of the last episode. If you're in, if you're in a real big hurry. Yeah. Oh. Uh. So yeah, I didn't. Um. Uh. Start watching it until they were like. There were only like two or three episodes, like two episodes left <laughs> to drop. Okay. So I was grossly and behind and. And, Chauncey and, had been watching it religiously. Even his dad had been watching it religiously. Um, so, but I was just I was distracted with other things, and after a while, it got to a certain point where it's like, I'll uh -huh. just, I'll just, I'll get to a point where I can just pretty much binge it and call it Rachel, a day. I was, I was kind of in the same boat with you. I watched like the first maybe four, five, and then I got distracted by other things, and I'm like oh crap i gotta finish this and then i watched the rest of it over the course of the weekend and I'm like, okay good but it's just i mean some parts were a slow burn but i it mm -hmm. top-notch storytelling though i i'm looking forward to season two and holy crap <laughs> i want more <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I mean, okay. So here's the thing. I've been struggling with this since I finished it a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. <laughs> so, what, and what I've were you struggling to, with? I've talked to Chauncey about it. I've been watching 
other people's analysis on YouTube videos. Um, and it's like, I like it. Mm-hmm. It's really well made. There's some, there are parts of it that are real, like the whole prison bit that's like three, uh-huh. you know, mini arc in the prison. Fabulous. I love all of that. Yep. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that's really, really good storytelling. But it got to the end of it, and I don't know if it's... Because I liked Rogue One so much. Yes. And still do. But there's something about this where it's like, I, I get what they're trying to do. Where they want to show the non Star Warsy parts of how the re- how the Star Wars universe was affected by the Empire. Like, you know, obviously we've seen Palpatine's rise like, in the prequels. Why, why the, yeah, why the rebellion had to had to be the rebellion and why they couldn't just Exactly. You know, we saw Empire. Yeah, we saw a little bit of the on the ground you know kind of more blue collar I don't know if that's right word, people, you know, air quote blue collar yeah. rebellion in Rogue One with you know kind of you know Jen or so a little bit of a reluctant you know participant in this whole rebellion thing. Um so but I mean when you say Star Wars, what do people think of? They think of Jedi's, they think of Darth Vader mm-hmm. They think of lightsabers and blowing up the Death Star and now, you know, Kylo Ren and, you know, it's still, you know, the Force and Yoda and now we've got Grogu and, you know, Boba Fett and the Mandalorians and, you know, you've got these things you think of when you think of Star Wars. And in this case, they wanted to show the uh, the rest of it because it's like, yeah, the fight against the Empire eventually falls on the shoulders of people like Leia and Luke and Han Solo and you know, the people that they interact with, you know, the you know, flying the Millennium Falcon and uh-huh. and all of these things. But it's like the Empire, obviously the reach is so far and wide across the galaxy that it's not just these people that are affected and it's not the rebellion had to come from somewhere right and the battle of yavin was the culmination of all of these years of people working people like mon mothma you know trying Mm -hmm. to play politics to the public so that the empire doesn't get any inclination that she's actually working against them outside of her obvious political pursuits like you know we see her speaking into the galactic senate actively campaigning against palpatine's some of palpatine's ideas and and stuff so but you know that's politics but she's literally letting her family (laughs) fall apart not that she really seems to care a whole lot which i can't blame her at least as far as her husband is concerned he's a piece of shit um yeah i was just like man you can send somebody you can have him snuffed out i'm not gonna think any less of you he needs yeah me neither (laughs) (laughs) like throw him under the bus stuff going on there that we go girlfriend yeah (laughs) so you know it's just like you know the stuff had to happen for them to get to the point where the battle of yavin could take place Uh and the death star be destroyed so i get that that's what they're trying to do with this is show that it's the grassroots Mm -hmm. little subversive groups of small numbers of people you know uh, you know, handfuls of people that are just doing anything and everything they can to just make the Empire's day bad. Mm-hmm. It's not blowing up the Death Star, it's stealing a bunch of money. <laughs> you know, <laughs> not Hit everything, but a good chunk book. of it. <laughs> yeah, you know, hitting him in the pocketbook. Um, 
uh, you know, eventually having staging a rebellion in one of their prison labor camps, you know, <laughs> it's like, you know, the, the rebellion has to start somewhere. Yeah. Thought it was the sneezer. Um, and you've got different, even in the, even in these factions of little rebellion groups, you've still got, you've got everyone from Cassie Andor who really does not want to be involved uh until they make it personal mm -hmm. uh you know he just wants to he just wants to survive he he just wants to be him and his mom and the household droid just want to live a quiet life and not be bothered and it uh, just uh, a bunch of circumstances it, it's He's a domino cool. effect you know it's a domino effect he's like he just wants to find his sister dagnabbit so he can have mm -hmm. his family complete. Um, yeah. But, you know, he ends up in the... He ends up in the wrong place at the wrong time in front of the wrong people. Accidentally shoots someone and then is, for, you know, essentially forced to kill the other one. So there's no witnesses, which suddenly makes him a wedded man. Uh, and that gets him involved with Luthen, which gets him involved with, the you know, uh, a, a cell of, of rebels. And you know, they're this job, um, and all of this stuff, so yeah, it's it is it's a little spark that helps keep the rebellion going till eventually they can get to the point where they find themselves in a situation where they can deal the empire a really, really big blow so i i get that that's what they're trying to say with this series but i just i don't know i just i feel like i'm missing something and i don't know what it is yeah and it's i think that's driving me more nuts is the fact that i can't figure out what it is because if i can figure out what it is then i can maybe try and fix it like mm -hmm. watch something again and maybe catch something that I didn't the first time and maybe something will click into place but for the life of me I can't tell you what it is <laughs> I can't either <laughs> to, to fix it. so I don't I mean I have questions by the end of this but I mean that's not that unusual like you know why was he on this as a kid, why was he on this planet where there was like this Lord of the Flies type, you know, feral children thing going on when this planet was supposed to be uninhabitable after this like industrial accident that occurred? Like, what's the situation there? <laughs> you know, obviously we have a lot of questions about Luthien, but with any luck, those will get answered hopefully in the next season, if there's a next season. So supposedly this one, of all the Star Wars Disney Plus series, this one has the lowest watch numbers. So. Well, see. they didn't market it very well. Because, I don't know, I I talked to a lot of people, or I, you know, I heard, heard a lot of people say like, oh, I didn't even know that was out, or I didn't know that this was even a thing. So that, and, and then, like, at one point, didn't they have, like, the first two episodes on TV. Yes, like they did a couple weeks back. They aired the first two on ABC. Yeah, it was what? like around. I didn't know that. I want to say it was around Thanksgiving break, but yeah, they were like, oh yeah, Andor, that's a thing. And so part of it is, and also part of it is, they've kind of burned their bridges with a lot of the fans who are just like, yeah, yeah, you, you, you said it was going to be good, and, and, you know, look what happened with Boba Fett and. And to a certain extent, the Obi Wan show, it's just kind of like, yeah, we're done. So, I don't know. There, there, there is, there is some reasons, which is a shame because, I mean, it, it's, it's been getting high praise from those who watch it. I mean, I mean, my dad was singing its praises and saying, oh, you gotta watch it, you gotta watch it, you gotta watch it. It's amazing. And so, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, the the low the low viewing numbers. I'm like, yeah, I can I can see why because there are just people who are just like, I'm out, I'm done. But and it also For, starts out slow. 
uh, most yeah, not, of the people I talk to, that doesn't help either. They, they, they wanted uh, everyone that I've I've talked to that's finished it is like, mm-hmm. yeah, you have to get through like the first three episodes. Which and I knew what? that going. I knew that going into yeah. it. Honestly, I mm-hmm. think I wouldn't say three episodes. I would say four. If I mean, not, there there are people that are like, if you don't grab me within the first five, you know, five yeah. minutes, five, ten, fifteen minutes, I, I don't have time to waste on on waiting for this to to, to be good. Yeah, and, and it's not enough to just say, oh, it's a Star Wars thing. It's like, and it's a Star Wars thing. What? What do you? What's your point? Um, yeah, is, is is that kind of what? I, so, I mean. I'm not, I mean, I'm, it's not an excuse, but at the same time, it's like, this is why, this is why I had such low viewing numbers, mm-hmm. um, which I'm actually kind of surprised that they made those public, <laughs> because, uh, but I guess they have to I don't know if it's necessarily it. that Disney went public, or if just someone figured out how to get yeah. those numbers from somewhere. Yeah, there, there, are, there are some third party people, although they're going to have to start telling us, hey, these are our viewing numbers because they want ads. They want to put ads on there. And so they got to tell advertisers they got to be accurate about that. But yeah, it's it's it, it's a shame because I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, there's everyone's been, been saying it's wonderful, it's great and everything. And then there are people who are just like, yeah, but I don't care anymore. So it, it's a sad commentary on certain things that have been going on, but it is reality. Yeah. Now that being said, if you can finish it, it is good. Like I said, the whole mm-hmm. prison arc is fabulous. I mean, they could have done an entire season mm-hmm. with just that. And yes. I probably would have yeah. been really really fine with it because it's it's done so well. You know, it's it's the the sets are great granted the entire thing looks really good it's especially considering this is the first of the disney plus series that's not done in the the set with the the giant oh, screen the, big, the void yeah yeah or whatever the, the volume whatever the hell it's called um it looks like one of those those like it, when you go to the county fair and they have that big disc that spins really fast and you like you, you lean up against the wall and, and it like centripetal yeah. force mm-hmm. the force thing yeah it looks like that with screens yeah. on the inside yeah. yeah I thought anyway yeah the vo- volume I think is what it's called um, okay. that story I told about from GalaxyCon, Rosario Dawson mm-hmm. was talking about how she was filming and she, you know, they were like action and yeah. she just froze because she's like, holy shit, I'm in Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> so, none of that, this was all on location uh, and, for the most part. Andy's circus, holy crap, did he knock it out of the park? Oh Yet my again. god, yes. I mean, like, how, I mean, the man is obviously, he's a brilliant actor. Yeah, obviously he's made a name for himself doing mocap. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. First, you know, starting with with the Lord of the Rings, um, you know, is where he became kind of a household name. But he's also a really, really good actor when he gets to be just his face and not, you know, doing mocap for something and how he is not. He deserves way more recognition <laughs> than, yeah. than what, than what even he's if, got. Because yeah. so. even if he wasn't speaking or if he was in a scene in the background, my eyes were kind of on him just because of his facial expressions to get the read of what was going to be happening. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, wow. and you know, just the, uh, you know, the, the arc that his character goes through, again you know kind of subverting the the tropes you know he easily could be in this you know really hard ass kind of leader of these prisoners and 
been a jackass about it, but mm-hmm. when push comes to shove, he, he realizes that him, to- you know, making sure he chose the line because mm-hmm. he's, you know, he in theory has only so many days left in his sentence is shit. You know, it's bullshit. <laughs> there's no, there's, right. the empire has him. They're not, the, the empire does not care who these people are. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a that is a, 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 a rather heated discussion that uh, Chauncey and I have been engaged with with several people on whether when Cassian gets arrested and put in jail, whether the anyone ever realizes who they have. Because at this point, you know, Cassian Andor as an entity is a wanted man. And he, then he gets arrested and put in jail. And then the Empire doesn't realize that the person that they're looking for, they have in custody because he gave him a fake name. And Chauncey's like, right. well, why, you know, surely they, they scanned him and put him in system and checked for any records. I'm like, no, they wouldn't have done that. They're not, they don't, they don't give a they're lazy. flying <laughs> fart. They don't give a flying <laughs> fart <laughs> about who <laughs> these people are that have been assigned to their prison labor program you got a pulse could you handle some tools and stand up for hours on end great like i don't he they, he could have been emperor palpatine he could have said he was emperor palpatine and they would not have cared they just they needed a, warm it, bodies a... to continue the assembly line of putting these pieces together which like I kind of uh, the 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 post credit scene in the final episode. I kind of have to shake my head at like really, you really needed to show us that that entire time they were making parts for the Death Star. Like anyone with half a brain probably could have figured <laughs> out that that's what they were doing. No, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We, we like, oh, yeah, all that coming. stuff they were we assembling. Look, one. they're putting together the Death Star. <laughs> It's a surprise. Cure, you know, cue Iago. Oh, there's a big surprise. That's an incredible. I think I'm going to have a heart attack and die from that surprise. I'm going to have a heart attack yeah. and die from that surprise. You know. Look at me. I'm multi because of this revelation. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So it's like, yeah, I could have told him the minute that I saw people were building stuff. I'm like, yeah, they're building parts for the Death Star, you dummy. Mm-hmm. So if, if there's one thing that Disney knows how to do, it's member berries. Yeah. In this case, I do. I think it was highly unnecessary. Like they easily could have given us a post credit scene that was way more interesting than that. Like something about Luthien or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um. Or something more with Saw Guerrera, something. Yeah, or, you know, does Bix get to somewhere, you know, and how, you know, the... The chart, the seem- chart show that... The, the chart show that nostalgia, that the nostalgia sells. Yeah. Really bad fan service. Yeah, they're like, this is like the last 30 seconds of the show when we've hardly had any nostalgia in here. Let's throw it in here now. So what? We could sell more Death Star toys. No, I I do appreciate that if you know your expanded universe, mm-hmm. that there is. It, it's not that this the series is devoid of Easter eggs and references to stuff. It's just more expanded universe that you need to know Mm -hmm. it's some of the books that some of the games um Mm -hmm. for you to be able to catch those references (laughs) i mean there's some props Uh like luthien's a luthien being an antiques dealer and having that big old fancy shop obviously gave the set dressers and set designers ample opportunity to put all sorts of easter eggs in there so there's bits and pieces from like some of the prequels mm-hmm. there's some indiana jones yep <laughs> props in there because uh-huh. star wars always has references to indiana jones and in indiana jones always has star at references to star wars in it because it's george lucas oh um and john williams and steven spielberg they're all just one little happy trifecta of 
blockbuster makers who you know so um they have to they have to do the thing um and so yeah so obviously the the set designers took every opportunity they could to <laughs> put props and stuff in there that were nice nice little easter eggs um but then there's also references to stuff that you kind of need to know you're, you're like i said kinda, there's some references to stuff that come that's from books um the uh the prison world belsavis which comes from a 95 book a book made printed in 1995 called children of the jedi yeah so uh so yeah there's a uh, uh stuff from star wars legends um uh, so um so yeah, there's still there's still references in there. It's not that it's not self referential, um, but it's not like, oh look, there's a Mandalorian walking in the background, you know, <laughs> or here's a reference to Yoda, or anything like that. So, um, but uh, so I did appreciate. The fact that while the Empire, in its big old scary powerful glory that I'm sure is exactly what Palpatine has been aiming for all the, you know, as he does his squirrely evil Emperor stuff, um, that, again, you think of Star Wars, you think of the Empire, you think of palpatine you think of darth vader you think of the death star and all this and it's like yeah they're the ones at the very top of the food chain but there's a lot of just bureaucratic paper pusher people that help make the empire run on a daily basis <laughs> so it's like you know yeah we have the occasional you know battle sequence of blasters and stuff but then we also have scenes where it's people sitting around a table debating about stuff and doing paperwork <laughs> which I really appreciated <laughs> I mean when um, what's his face um, Cyril you know gets fired <laughs> And then, you know, and then he, he eventually, you know, through uh, family favors, gets a new job. And then they have that one shot where he's just like in his cubicle and it's just all gray and everything. He's just sitting there like. It's all sad and bureaucratic and it's hilarious. <laughs> oh. oh. Anybody else amused and also slightly horrified by Cyril's uh, apparently pushy Jewish space mothers as a thing? Yes. I was like, oh my god. I was like, oh. Half the time I had expected her to grab his cheek, you know, like, you must sugar! Yeah. So she was too busy complaining. About how he's a disappointment to her. <laughs> uh, pushy Jewish space mothers. I didn't know it was a thing I needed in Star Wars, but apparently we all do. Right? Oh, my goodness. So, um, I'm serious about the, that uncle, too. I'm like, who's his uncle? <laughs> Yeah, I was like, are we ever going to find out who the uncle is? Or is that just going to be a... Doesn't matter. Guess we'll find out at some point. Maybe. Or it'll be some yeah. grand reveal. <laughs> yeah. Or he'll just be nobody, because that's kind of what they seem mm -hmm. to be going for, is not really any yeah. grand reveals. So, I mean, I know at least part of my problem, and I this is a very small part um obviously because i consume other media where this is a thing where 
I never really felt like Cassian was truly in danger because I know where he ends up. Right. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, like, you know he's going to be fine because we know when and how he dies. <laughs> exactly. It's like listening to Big Finish. It's like, I'm never truly concerned for the doctor or companion's whereabouts or what happens to them because it's like i know when this doctor regenerates and i know how this companion leaves yeah <laughs> so it's mm -hmm. like uh um, well, the exception of ace because he don't right <laughs> no yeah i mean there's always exceptions but for the most part it's like yeah it's like i know how, when and where and how you die and who you're with so i'm not truly concerned about you mm -hmm. which maybe in a way keeps me a little bit from becoming emotionally invested yeah it could be yeah so um that being said the old man of his group of workers at his table. I was emotionally oh, yeah. invested and I yeah. was really upset when he died. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, no, why? Come on. Yeah. I, was, I was upset he when... should have his happy ending. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, granted, once we found out that nobody ever truly gets out, it's like, well, though, he got off lucky. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he 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 got to go quietly and peacefully mm -hmm. and with right. his friends and not have to worry about you know literally dying being slumped over with tools in his hands so mm -hmm. yeah i will i will give him that but still i was emotionally invested so, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that may be a little upset there um and again, but, uh, they had their way with the droids. Mm-hmm. I love B. Mm-hmm. I love B. I was like, oh. Yeah, it would be when after Cassian's mom dies. And oh, they're I like, know. Yeah, they're like Aww. taking care of the house. And they're like, B, she's gone. She's not coming back. He's like, I'm going to stay here just in case. <laughs> like, no, man. Like, oh, no. <laughs> We're emotionally compromised again by a draw. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, at first it was the sword of the librarians. Now we get the droids in Star Wars. Yeah. It's just like, ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah, Dang yeah. it, they know how to get to fangirls' hearts. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like let's give you this inanimate object that in no way should have feelings whatsoever our little um, precious cinnamon rolls mm -hmm. which I think are now up to a dozen give or take like <laughs> yeah he's still not BB-8 though but he's close yeah um, close. <laughs> yeah um, I do, and I do find it I told Chachi this when I got to that episode. I, I was like, it's funny because it just shows how incompetent some of the uh, uh, the Empire actually is. That we spent all of these episodes with this extremely overzealous, totally drinking the Kool Aid. You know, company guy in Cyril, who, mm -hmm. you know, absolutely, you know, is a company man when it comes to the Empire. Oh, yeah. And then you've got Deidre, who yeah. is not quite drinking the Kool Aid, but at the same time wants to do her job really, really well and hates if, like, red tape is getting in the way of mm -hmm. her doing her job. And, you know, we get this whole thing with him you know searching for cassie nandor and his it's like oh his you know Cyril wants cassie nandor because he killed these two guys right. deidre wants cassie nandor because he's got a connection to this unknown unnamed hell in heaven <laughs> uh, yeah unknown unnamed don't even know what he looks like you know kind of benefactor that's helping fund the rebellion of course we know it's luthien but she doesn't know that 
Um, and, but she knows that Cassie Andor has got a connection to him, so it's like she needs to capture Cassie Andor. Meanwhile, Cassie Andor does get captured and thrown in jail, not because he's Cassie Andor, because he's on vacation and he ends up in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yep. <laughs> but because that hand, you know, that little part of the Empire, the apparently that that part of the judicial system that just needs warm bodies for these prison labor camps does not care who you are. You got a pulse. We're throwing you in jail and sending you off to, you know, it's like he gives them a fake name. He gives them a fake home planet and they never check it because they don't care. So he ends up in jail, the one place he doesn't want to be, but because they don't care who he is, nobody's checking to see if he actually is wanted by the Empire for any other reason. Yeah, he's so it's like, the they literally had him in jail for like a month and had no idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically kind of like the doctor and the tar going to the police, to the TARDIS, I'm going to arrest myself here. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And then he stages a full-on rebellion, which again, going back to Andy Serkis, it's one of those things where it's like yeah, the hindsight is twenty twenty because obviously the death of, of their friend and him realizing the truth, which I don't know what the deal was with that medic. Like he just did not give a crap that he was just running his mouth and spilling all the secrets or whatever. Uh, maybe because he, he knows even he's not getting out of there, even though he's not doing right. manual labor. Uh, mm -hmm. he's just, I kind of thought he was kind of, yeah, he's a medic, and he's also technically a prisoner as well, but... I, don't know. I think That's it's just the I... minute you're employed by the Empire, you're just in and you're never getting out, I think, is the right, yeah. the, the, the That's fact. Really but it's like, it, you know, and it, the, he and Cassie, like, you know, they give these, you know, kind of inspirational speeches, and, you know, he's like, you know, I'm just going to assume I'm dead already, which... Considering the way we've seen this prison being run, understandable. Because it's like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm either going to die, try to take this prison down from the inside, or I'm going to die just being a prisoner. So that's completely understandable. Until you get to where they get to the outside, and then he's like, I can't swim. <laughs> oh my that, I mean, that, that, takes, that, takes his, that takes his meaning like on a whole other level of I just assume I'm dead already because he knows mm -hmm. like, he's not stupid he knows where they're located he knows the only way to get away is to swim which is something he does not know how to do so he did it anyway knowing full and well that he he, he was a dead man even if they were successful, he was going to be a dead man anyway. Because mm. he, he'd either jump in the water, maybe someone would help him, but not likely, because right. at this point it's every man for himself. Even yeah. though Cassie, and if that, Cassie had not been knocked in, I'm sure Cassie probably would have tried. Yeah. Uh -huh. But once you're in the water, there's no climbing back up. Um, nope. So it's like, and. Yeah, they outnumber the guards, but eventually the Empire's going to find out. You know, I'm surely there's some alarm or something that's gone off somewhere and they're going to send in reinforcements. So anyone mm -hmm. that stays behind is DOA. Yeah. So To paraphrase Hotel California, you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um so, you know, well, like I said, the whole prison bit, I love it. They could have done yeah. a full season of just that. And I I think I totally would have been way more engaged. Just, I didn't, like, again, I don't care that they were building stuff for the Death Star. It, it That's obvious. Whatever. It's just the whole prison idea. Uh, you know, seeing, again, how the Empire works and what they think works versus you know it's it's funny to watch it's something like this where you have the empire that that they've got all this power and control and obviously want to hold on to it as best they can so they're doing all of these things you know putting people in labor 
prison camps and you know not just any type of i mean there are prison labor camps like i said that one that comes from the the book from 1995 is on a planet that's been frozen over but there's pockets underground that aren't frozen so they turn that into to, to prison cells um so you know it's like like look at this prison it's all white and shiny and bright and you know the prisoners they wear white and everything's it doesn't necessarily look like a prison it kind of looks like the the it kind of looks like the uh factory on camino once you get inside yeah, <laughs> yeah it sure does yeah. i mean that's what so, it rachel yeah so it doesn't necessarily look intimidating or anything like a prison and to it you know and it's like the prisoners i mean they all have their own cells granted there's no doors or anything so they have no privacy which means you know if they want to clean off or go to the bathroom they're within view of at the very least the person directly across from them which sucks but they've got access to food and water i mean food air quotes it's mush but you know it's sustenance are not starving them i mean it's not ideal but at least they're not starving them it's just if we try to pull anything We'll just electrocute you by turning on the gr- you know turning on the floor <laughs> other mm-hmm. than that you got you know it's 12 hours on 12 hours off the floor yeah. is hot <laughs> yes it's it's literally the floor is lava kind of mm-hmm. yeah so somewhere anakin skywalker is going ha not funny um yeah it's like no the floor was lava in my case, literally. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, the whole that whole thing, I I think was absolutely very entertaining, and I really enjoyed it. So, but um, and the the um, the Aldani heist, once it got mm-hmm. going, was really cool. Um. Mm-hmm. You know the the using the this kind of astrological phenomenon that only occurs you know so many years, which looked really 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 good. So the yeah. special effects done for that look really good. Um, so yeah, the whole Aldani stuff once they the heist started was good. Um. But it's everything leading up to it where it's just like, okay, can we get on with this? So I, I think they could have maybe cut. I think they cut. I think maybe they could have cut all of the like young Cassian flashbacks mm-hmm. uh, out completely. It's like, do we need to know that his mother was not actually his mother? You know, we, that we, we could have found that out later. That's some the yeah, information that could have been dropped in season two. Or something, mm-hmm. or toward you know, towards the end, you know, somebody's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry about your mother," and she's like, "Yeah, she wasn't really my mother. Yeah, she just adopted me." And we could have saw seen some of the flashback stuff in the the next season. So, which why again with the Lord of the Flies children? Why is not? I mean, granted, you can kind of parse what it, what's going on just by watching them, but why are when they speaking? Why is that not translated? Right. I think Everything else in Star Wars sh- is translated. Why was theirs not translated? I think just to show a different culture and that you didn't need to have it translated to get the gist of what was going on, but it would have been nice to have some sort of translation. I, I, honest, I yeah. agree with you. Yeah. So... And then, too, we kind of get it, and then with some Mon Mothma and her husband stuff, we get the drop of Canto Bite, which that had my ears perked. I'm like, okay, <laughs> that ties into the sequels later on down the I mean, line. if you're going to talk about space gambling, where do you go? Right. Yeah. I mean, it would have been a little more apropos if it was a certain hut, but guess that might have been too baby at the time who knows how 
old Java was at said time period, but they... <laughs> I mean, this is five years before Rogue One. Right. And obviously Rogue One goes literally right into the start of A New Hope, so... <laughs> So Jabba yeah. could have been making his making his claim to fame. Yeah, I mean, just the huts in general. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the huts, even outside of this, as we've seen in other series and stuff, that the huts are not the only crime syndicate out there in town. Yeah, yeah. in in the galaxy. So yeah. So well, I mean, why not Java have it be was... this 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 guy that's all you know because Mon Moth was like I need 400,000 credits ASAP and her, yeah. her cousin's like what the hell did you do mm -hmm. <laughs> bought a lot of shoes were you expecting yeah. were you expecting um, that to be her, her cousin like I, I couldn't know her name but were you expecting that relation I was not it was not. It was I, I exactly. find that interesting. That yeah, but again, it goes to show that the rebellion is made up of all sorts of people. You got Cassie Nandor, who was apparently living Lord of the Flies life until he gets picked up by this woman, and then you've got Mon Mothma and her cousin, who come from not necessarily royalty, but they're upper class. Mm -hmm. You know, extremely wealthy. Um, but Mom Mothma, because of her job, she's in a position where she has to put on a front, even though she's actively also trying to support the rebellion as best she can, either by blocking the Empire politically or funneling them money as best she can. Um, you know, you kind of Luthien's kind of the, the middleman. Um, in all of that, but you know, eventually <laughs> her bank accounts don't quite match up, and it almost comes back to bite her in the butt until she throws her husband under the bus again. Don't feel sorry for him whatsoever. The man's a jackass. Um, mm -hmm. oh, but then her cousin, also because of the same family, also extremely wealthy, but she's not a politician, so her face is not as recognizable as others so she was able to do the Aldani thing and nobody would glance at her twice until the Aldani mission went sideways so <laughs> you know if it wasn't if it wasn't the, it, you know at this point because the Aldani mission was successful thankfully Mon Mothma doesn't necessarily need to continue feeding her own money into the rebellion mm -hmm. for now. But even those millions and millions of credits that they stole are going to last for so long because as we see, the rebellion is going to grow and we get to the point where they need to build you know, bases in, in various locations. You know, that's how we end up with the Row of Ace and the Battle of Yavin and obviously all those X wings and Y wings and all that equipment for the Battle of Yavin gets paid for somehow. <laughs> you know, Ooh. Luke didn't bring his own X wing to the Battle of Yavin. Someone had to supply that for him. <laughs> so, um, Millions don't compete. Yeah, exactly. And then eventually, you know, they build the, the base on Hoth and, you know, the, the other other stuff we see in the those three films. So, um, so yeah, rebellions aren't cheap by any means, especially as they grow and try to build into something that can make a bigger impact. You can only you can only steal so many payrolls. Before the empire is like you know they figure it out and do something else yeah so it's it's building up and building and building and building and building until it ends up to the battle of heaven big space ball go boom mm-hmm 
So, yep. yeah, I'm, I'll be interested to see if we get a season two and what they decide to do with it because this is only f- five years before the events of Rogue One, which is not a lot of time actually for them to cover. So I wonder how many more seasons they think they could go before it's like, eh, I think you're trying to squeeze just a bit too much in there. Mm-hmm. So, or they start overlapping with stuff that we've already seen from other perspectives, from other things, either from Rogue One or, you know, one of the, the cartoon TV series or whatever. Like Rebel. So, yeah, yeah, like yeah, Rebels or something Rebel. like that. Eventually, they're going to start overlapping to the point where it's like, this is kind of pointless. Yeah. Again, my humble opinion. Yeah, well, you can only you can only drain the well so many times before it's uh, completely bone dry, and then you got to actually come up with something new. <laughs> uh, yep. You know. In the meantime. In the meantime, we've got Mandalorian season three coming in. <laughs> in March first, so yay! Yeah. <laughs> in, with the animated, the Bad Batch season two comes mm-hmm. out in January fourth. Yep. So yeah. we've still got plenty of stories to be told from this universe. So even even if we don't get any more of Andor, Andor, I think that the the story they told is important. Like, don't get mm-hmm. me wrong, I totally get why people think that the series is so good is because of the story it's the story it's telling it's not real it's not relying on nostalgia which you know unfortunately is what the the disney trilogy is is, is, like some people are calling it relied really on it was kind of a rehashing of the 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 og trilogy so mm-hmm. uh, it really was. it's like With oh look giant space thing you know it's like oh giant thing that can kill entire planets go boom oh look the emperor yeah. ah emperor's dead After look a guy who wears kidding. all black and is really angry yeah. oh look he gets redeemed at the end and then he dies So, young person uses the force. <laughs> it's a rehash. Easy. It's a rehash of the OG trilogy, essentially. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, I enjoy the the new movies. If it wasn't for the new movies, I would not be here now. Excited for things like the Mandalorian and things like that. So. Yeah, I will give I will give the the Disney trilogy that for bringing me into the fandom because I was not really that big of a Star Wars fan before them. Uh, so at least I and got that going for really good stuff. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so you know, something's something's got to be your 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 initial hook, even if it isn't necessarily the best thing ever. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to have a an okay pizza before you realize just how good pizza can be. Well, I can't argue with that. Metaphors are hard. (laughs) I don't know why I was amused by that, but I was amused by the pizza metaphor. I don't know why. Rachel, have you had dinner yet? I did. Oh, okay. I was like, I'm just hungry. What's going on? But that's okay. But we're it, it's 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 Disney adjacent, and therefore food comes into the food comes into the equation at some point. Ah, okay. Well, we'll go with that then. All right. Well, if uh, any of our listeners want to chime in on Andor, uh, or you know anything else we covered on our podcast this fine day, you can send us feedback. Our email address is fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. And our website, if you want to visit that for more links and goodies, our website is 
d5ishfangirls.com, and that has links to all of our social media, uh, Facebook, and YouTube, and Instagram. So we're all in those places. So yeah, you can leave comments there, follow what we're doing, what we're keeping tabs on, all that kind of good stuff. And, you know, and if you leave comments, we read them out as, as uh, feedback as well. So that's another avenue. And then also there are, um, we have a Patreon and a merch shop to help support the podcast. So if you feel so inclined to, to toss a few coins our way, that would be amazing. And, but however your, whatever your support looks like, we thank you for listening and being here and, uh, you know, just, uh, hanging out with us as we, as we, as we do what we do and hope you all are doing well and Mm -hmm. staying, uh, staying safe and happy and healthy and whatever, whatever, wherever you find yourself these days. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, yes, we do appreciate all of the, all of the support. Uh, we'll save all the uh, warm fuzzies for next week, which is episode oh. 400. Mm-hmm. And it will totally be a surprise as to what we'll be doing. For all of us. <laughs> for all of us. <laughs> Even will be surprised. So, Even will be surprised. <laughs> so come enjoy the surprise. Mm-hmm. Whatever it could be. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, okay. Well. Whew, with that, I think uh, we shall definitely sign off for this week. So Chrissy can go rest. So she's nice and healthy for show 400. <laughs> Hey, I did fine. I did fine after that first initial. Bout. Yay! So I'm I'm actually doing great. Yay! Yeah, you did. I'm also just getting old and creaky. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is Brittany from Bubba Go Say to Me. This, this is Chrissy Say Sorry, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, <we're> gone. <laughs> this is Chrissy saying goodnight from Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin saying good evening. She's better, but she's not 100% yet. So. <laughs> like, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah, I'm getting there. Yeah, you got another week. Uh, and this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Sit down, dearie, and eat your, eat your hypo cereal and drink your blue milk. You need to you need to get your vitamin C big and strong and good for the, for your new job to sit in your cubicle and and push papers all day. to the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. You can find more episodes and information at the fiveishfangirls.com. Any and all books, movies, games, and any other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders. No copyright infringement is intended or implied. If you wish to support the show, the easiest way is to leave us a rating and review. More ratings and reviews will make it easier for others to find the show. If you wish to support us monetarily, you can do so at patreon.com slash fiveish fangirls podcast. All money goes towards fees and equipment to keep the show going. For official fiveish fangirls merchandise, visit redbubble.com slash people slash fiveish fangirls. We love hearing from our listeners and encourage feedback. You can email us at fiveish fangirls at gmail.com. You can also like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fiveish fangirls. Thank you so much for listening and may the squee be with you.